Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to treat a closet space. This is a closet that had an issue with fabric eating pests. We're talking about things like carpet beetles, clothing moths, uh, case making moths, maybe some cigarette beetles or drugstore beetles. There's a plethora of insects that can feed on fabric. Now, obviously, the closet is empty, as you can see. That's one of the mandates that you have to follow if you're going to do the proper treatment. But before I get into the actual treatment, let's take a look at what arsenal we have at our disposal for this type of a treatment. So first, of course, you gotta have your proper safety equipment. And since we're working in a controlled environment, we wanna have with us some type of a, a rubber glove. Again, I'm a big fan of the surgical gloves because they just allow me to feel everything and not have to worry about getting any product on me. Because I'm in a controlled environment, a small room, I'm probably wearing the pesticide rated respirator if I'm doing any aerosol applications. I don't think I'm gonna need the face mask because I'm really not treating above my head today. The goggles will probably suffice if you've got a pair of prescription glasses and they're fairly big, you should be okay on that front. There's just not gonna be a lot of spray in here. So the hazard is somewhat reduced with the exception of using the dust or the aerosols. And then afterwards, if we're setting up with the aerosol machines, once again, they're so minimal with what kind of product they're putting out that they just don't pose any kind of a hazard. Uh, so let's talk about the pests and then let's talk about why they're a problem. So in this closet, obviously it's got a door, it's got a light switch, and it's a fairly pretty big closet. The issue was that they had some stored clothing hanging from the rack, and they discovered some holes in the clothing. So the question is, how much of my clothing is infested? and how do I treat the clothing, and then how do I treat the actual closet. So the first thing you need to do, as I said before, is get everything out. When you take everything out, you have a couple of options. You can dry clean any fancy clothing like suits or fine linens, something that you can't wash. But for most people, the bulk of their clothing can be washed. Do you have to wash or dry clean everything? No. You could conceivably put your clothing in a liner, a clear liner that I've mentioned before, which can hold the clothing. And then if any insects come out of the clothing, they'll be trapped in the liner so you'll be able to see them. And this will give you the ability of determining whether or not there's an actual infestation that's active on those pieces of clothing. Once all the clothing is out and you've either pack, packed it up in a, clear baggy, or you've gone ahead and brought it to the dry cleaner, you will purge the insects from the room and you'll be purging the insects from the clothing if you get it dry cleaned or if you wash it yourself. But to be clear, what happens in this situation is that there's a pest, one of these fabric eating pests that got into this closet because they either found their way to the carpeting or they got on some clothing and were carried in or you brought something in a box and you stored it up on the shelf and then they were able to live there, move out, migrate away from those areas and get into the clothing or ultimately into the carpeting. At the end of the day, if you're finding holes in your clothing, if you're finding, say, casings, like insect skins, if you're finding webbing, any kind of droppings, light little droppings. Uh, you can kind of see some up in that corner there. I'll get a flashlight on that in a moment. These are all signs that a pest was here 
and that you probably have to do some treating in some of these areas. The fabric eating pests are pretty much secretive. And what I mean by that is carpet beetles, clothing moths, black carpet beetles. They don't want to be seen. They want to hide. They're very, very comfortable hiding. They like dark spaces. So in between clothing is comfortable for them. Up underneath here is comfortable. And as you can imagine, most of the day, this light is off. And it's pretty dark in here when the light is off. So they're comfortable in a dark setting. They don't want you to see them. They don't come out and crawl around like a roach or an ant. They stay on the clothing. They stay on the fabric. They stay on the actual carpeting. So now that we have a handle on what should be done with the clothing, and we're looking at an empty closet, don't be overwhelmed with what you see here. Treating this is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of places for them to live. So what options do we have? Well, if you look at our carpet beetle or our clothing moth articles, what you'll find is that we tend to recommend the Bythor, and that can be liquid spray to carpets and of course to the baseboard and then we also recommend the multi-purpose insect killer aerosol. It's a very, very light aerosol, ideally suited for sensitive uh, fabrics, so something that you don't want to spray with the liquid bithor. In this case, I'm bringing into play a couple of other options. I'm bringing in the dust, which is sometimes needed, and I'm bringing in the FSMP. I'm also bringing in the Mini Mister, just to demonstrate that this tool is once again ideally suited for a space like this because it's so fast and easy and it will get the job done without you having to overspray and you know potentially make a mess of things. It's just not needed. Carpets do tend to require more treatment than what the Mini Mister can deliver. So you have to sometimes take a hardcore look at the actual carpet to see how thick it is and if there's anything going on down there in the nap. In this case, this carpet is pretty tight and it's about uh, three-eighths of an inch to a half inch deep. So therefore, at the nap of the carpet, there could be a lot of activity. Because it's nice and tight, it's not easy for eggs and whatnot to get to the bottom of it. However, once eggs hatch, the larvae can crawl down in there. And for that reason, liquid treating this carpet would probably be ideal. But let's start up top and go from there. So on the top section, because we have some cracks and crevices, we would consider treating with the FSMP. This is not featured in our article. But the reality is that we do have some areas. Let me get my flashlight. And as you can see, we have like little cracks here. So we got a crack here, we've got a crack here, uh, we've got a crack here. These are all places where adults are going to crawl and lay eggs, whether you've got carpet beetles, whether you've got clothing moths. Now when we take a look at the railing, the same thing applies. They might lay some eggs around the actual base or maybe where the pipe slides into the mount. And when we follow this back piece, potentially there could be some crawling in here. Here's a really nice gap that they would love to infiltrate. Another gap up here. Back in there we see some webbing and some droppings maybe or casings from an insect, carpet beetle or moth. And of course across here we have another nice gap. Great place for them to want to do their egg laying. We have the same crack across the top back spot where the shelf meets the wall. These joints all would require a little bit of treating. And for these cracks and crevices, ideally the FSMP is suited. Could you take the Bythor and spray it up there? Sure. And you can take the Mini Mist there and spray the bithor up there. But as we explained and have mentioned in many videos, 
the FSMP affords you the ability of killing everything on contact. So a quick tss across there and tss and then maybe it's tss tss two or three applications in here and you're killing anything that might be in there. As far as this uh, top shelf, a little tss up here. And at any place where you can get it to take product, I'm looking underneath there, it's pretty tight, but not tight enough. Insects can definitely get in there. So I would be concerned. I would be shooting some spray up there. I'd probably keep a paper towel in case anyone was running down and I would wipe it away just to keep it cosmetically clean. But I would do it, or better than that, you know what? I'd actually treat from the top. So I would do my treatment from here and just right across. Just like that, that's gonna get me, if you look below, you would see the product coming out. And I would probably move it about this pace. And I take a step back and see if any came out. And if it comes out from underneath, then I just wipe it with a paper towel or tissue. Over here, I'd spray a little bit. And then I do the same thing up here. And with that being said, I think I've covered pretty much all the cracks and crevices where they could potentially laying eggs or pupating. The actual base, like I said, is always potentially a problem. So you can't ignore these. And then the centerpieces just as much. So the FSMP would be a good option here. If you're using it, you gotta have on the respirator. You've gotta have on at least the goggles. The respirator is key because we're in a confined area. No ventilation. So we're not gonna be spraying something where you're not gonna be protected, at least with the FSMP. It's got an odor and it's highly volatile. So the pesticide rated cartridges for the respirator are kind of important. Now, you could opt to go with the Mini Mister and with Bythor. The Mini Mister with Bythor would require nothing but a quick spraying uh, with the Mini Mister, which as we've seen in the past can be very fast. And if we just turn this on, we would be able to direct the spray into all the areas quite effectively across the entire area without making a mess. We could also hit here. into that gap there. And we would have this area pretty much treated. Now you can see we got some water running down, so that was obviously a little over applied there. But overall, not any other spot. So it was very efficient with how it ran. And this would just with a paper towel wipe off and no hazard present because it's so dilute. So you would have effectively gotten these areas treated and protected without having to have an odor. Do you need to wear a respirator? Probably not, but I would recommend it again because we're in a confined area. So always better to be on the safe side. At this point, we've effectively shown two methods of treating this upside or the top side of the closet and it would handle anything that's developing. In other words, if you had eggs or pupa up here, the FSMP would kill it all instantly. The Bythor would lay in here, and once it's dry, you can have all your clothing go back, and it would not be anything hazardous to the clothing that's on here. So the surfaces would not be contaminating anything that you put back on the top shelf or on the rails. So at this point, the top half has been treated. If you look carefully at the ceiling, you see it's all sealed. And we see the same over here. So there's no cracks or crevices. If you're not finding anything up there, then there's no need to treat. What does that leave us? Well, we have the door frame. And once again, you can see 
it's nice and tight. And for the sake of this video, we're not stepping outside the door. We're staying confined to the closet. So after that, all we have left is the carpet and the baseboard, both of which are vital areas for a range of, of insects, not just the fabric uh, nesting pests, but pretty much anything, ants, roaches, sow bugs, they all wanna get underneath here. This is the point of hiding for most all insects. And then if you're a carpet beetle, down in the nap of the carpet. If you're a flea, down in the nap of the carpet. This carpet is so thick that I don't see any option other than the bithor used through a pump sprayer. That would be how you would have to apply it. I would not have to apply a lot in here. The approximate dimensions are about four and a half feet wide and about eight feet. So we got 30 feet, 30 square feet. My gosh, that requires virtually nothing. A gallon can cover, a gallon of mixed bithor will treat 500 to 800 square feet. So let's just say for argument's sake that it's 800 square feet per gallon. Uh, this is a little bit thicker. So I would say if we were treating all carpets like this, we would want to get 600 square feet out of a gallon. And if this is say 30 square feet in here, then 30 square feet is approximately 5% of the 600 square feet. 10% would be 60, 5% would be 30 square feet. So 5% of a gallon, which is about, let's see, 10% 10, 10 of a gallon would be 12.8 ounces. So 5% would be about six ounces of spray. So that's all you need, six ounces of mixed diluted spray on this carpet. But here's the kicker. The spray does not do a good job of getting underneath the baseboard. And this is where many people fail. Carpet beetles, black carpet beetles, cigarette beetles. These are a big issue. And once again, you're confronted with something or a decision to make. Do you want to go to the extreme best option that's fast working? And if so, it would be the FSMP. So the FSMP, you can easily drag along here. And if I was applying it with the respirator on, I would be going And then I would do the same from the other side. And then I would do the same across here. So this piece that's about four and a half feet, it would take me this amount of time to treat that fast I've killed everything that's there so from a cost point of view very very effective from a results point of view very very effective but it only lasts a month maybe a little longer so what you might opt to do is you'll notice in our carpet beetle and I think probably in our clothing moth uh, article we have the delta methrin dust that dust gets applied with a duster like this and a little crusader, which when you puff it, blows it out. So this duster comes with the tip, which unfortunately I forgot to bring, but that little tip, which you can see in the crusader video, is ideal for this. Why? Because it lets you get that tip into or underneath that space and you'll be able to inject the dust this nozzle that's on here now is just too big so it's not going to do the job uh, meaning that you're going to get a plug up when you try to force it in there you'd have to use the other nozzle that comes with it to effectively dust under here now you might say why would you choose the dust over the fsmp the answer to that is because the FSMP would be uh, a, a short-lived residual, meaning that it's gonna give you three to four weeks of residual. But if you put the Delta Methrin dust underneath here, it's gonna last indefinitely. The only thing that's gonna take out that Delta Methrin dust would be a vacuum. So if you came in here and vacuumed that, you could suck it all out. But if you put the dust underneath there, using the small tip, 
that we have that comes with it. You'll be able to fit it underneath here. And of course, get the dust back in that space, which is a very common place for carpet beetles and drugstore uh, beetles, cigarette beetles. Uh, it, they just love to crawl in this space. So you have to make that decision. Do you want to be a permanent fix, one that you won't have to worry about for a long time, or do you go with the FSMP and a little bit of odor, knock them all out right away so you won't be seeing anything? Because to be clear, the dust, even though it lasts long, it doesn't kill all stages. It will kill the larvae and the adults, but any eggs that hatch, you know, they'll die. The pupa, when they come out, you'll be seeing them. You'll be seeing some adults coming out and you might freak out. It's like, oh no, I found another one and think that it's the end, end of times. But the reality is that you can't kill the pupa with any of these products except the FSMP. So if you want complete control and knowing that you've killed everything that's in the immediate vicinity, you'd have to use the FSMP. Going back to the carpet, give that a good... Uh, five ounces of material, let it soak in and dry for a good hour to two hours, and the carpet will be fine. Anything developing in the carpet is going to hatch out, but the bithor will take care of it. So at this point, we've treated the carpet, we've treated the baseboard, and you notice I didn't mention using Mini Mister on the baseboard, and that's because it's really not a practical application. You need something that's going to penetrate. And if you're going to use the Bythor on the carpet, then saturating that crack right there is very effective. And I would recommend using the sprayer for that over the mini mister. Of course, the aerosol, the FSMP injected would be overall the strongest option because it's, it's powered by the aerosol can. So it does push way in there and that will give you the ultimate control because it's going deeper and it's also killing all the stages. So ultimately the best for underneath there. And after we've got the carpet done and we've got the top side done, we can then let the closet dry. That typically takes an hour. Uh, in some cases, if it's humid summertime, it might take a couple of hours, but at, at the end, what you're trying to do here is make sure everything is dry before you put everything back into the space. Now, once you do that, once you're ready to move everything back in, what you want to do is consider setting up an aerosol machine. Aerosol machines are probably best suited if you're dealing with some kind of a moth. The one thing you don't ever want to do is use clothing moth traps or beetle traps inside this environment. There's no point to it. If you've found damage, if you found casings and you set out a pheromone trap, all you're doing is looking to attract more beetles into the space and that's self-defeating. So to get the space purged, we don't want any pheromones pulling these guys back in. The aerosol machine is a, a handy tool to intercept any hatching adults from pupa as well as any larvae coming out of eggs that maybe you missed. So let's say that there was something that was on top of this door frame and you didn't, you didn't treat there. Or maybe there's something coming out of the vent. This can happen. This is uh, what we call a, uh, a port where the air is actually coming out so it's not likely that you're going to get insects coming in but sometimes there's suction vents in a room and a suction vent can collect a lot of debris and then insects will naturally forage there they'll get sucked there and the debris they can feed on because well the fabric in this rug whether it's synthetic or not is uh, something that most any insect can feed on, but more importantly, the dust and the dander from people and pets are what feed a lot of carpet beetles and clothing moths. So if you've got the 
any, you know, if you have a pet, if you have even human hair, just one piece of human hair can feed these insects real well. So if they have a piece of food that's collected on these vents and they go through their life cycle on the vent, well then it's very possible you're going to see them coming out. And you may not be here when that happens. So having an aerosol machine as a backup is not a bad idea. What does it do for you? Well, we recommend the aerosol 2000 over the 1000 and 3000 because this one has a little photo sensor. You kind of see it right here. And that photo sensor tells it when it's dark or light. So you can have it operating only when it's dark. Uh, and that's a nice tool to have. It means essentially it will be operating when there's nobody in here. And then if people are in here, it's going to shut down. The clear zone doesn't last forever. It's a pyrethrin based spray. Very, very active on flying pests, but it doesn't last. It's gone in 10 to 15 minutes. So by default, this machine is going off every 15 minutes, but because this is such a small area, you could very well set this to go off every 30 minutes and you would not be sacrificing anything. If you set this to go off every 30 minutes when it was say dark, it would just do its job. Anything that came out of a vent, anything that came out of a cocoon that you had missed with the FSMP, or if you didn't treat with the FSMP and you only used the Bythor, the aerosol from the clear zone would take care of that insect, that adult. So there'd be no chance of it finding a mate and laying some eggs. Uh, so you can defeat anything that might wander in. I know in a lot of parts of the country, people leave their windows open. And once there is a trap, a pheromone trap in any of these environments, the pheromones will be attracting insects for long periods of time. We're not talking about uh, two or three months. The pheromones, even though are removed from a room, can continue to attract insects for a year or more. And if you have windows open in a bedroom and you had moth traps or carpet beetle traps in this room, the pheromones would be leaking out of the house and pulling them in because all these pests are active outside in the spring and summer and fall. So if they came in here and you had this machine running, it would take them out. So the machine is your last bit of insurance and it's very easy to deploy. Essentially, you just open it up. The D-cell uh, batteries go on the top and then the can fits on the bottom side and then the buttons for it will let you take the mode or move it to the mode that you want with a 30 minute setting, etc. 15 minute is by default, but like I said, this is such a small area, every 30 minutes would be plenty. And once you've got this unit installed, you won't have to worry so much about anything coming in here and being you know, able to survive. The spray from the clear zone would take it out. The average life of the can is about uh, 30 to 40 days. So installing one to two cans after you've done a job is usually a good idea. Is it needed? No. If you're totally thorough with your treatment, there's just not going to be anything living and you won't have to worry about it. But for some people, particularly if they have clothing that they're really uh, wanting to save and worried about getting damaged, then using the aerosol machine, setting it up, is not a bad idea. So I hope you found this video helpful regarding a closet and how to treat it if we have some type of a fabric eating pest. I try to be thorough with the product options and you'll find them all listed on this page with this video so that you can order right from this page. The amount or the extent that you go to is really up to you regarding the FSMP versus the dust versus the Bythor. But in this case, once the closet is empty and you have access to the shelves, the railings and the floor, you can do a thorough treatment that will eliminate any fabric eating pest. 
So thanks for watching my video from bugspray.com.